Welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. With over 20 years of real estate experience and selling over 150 homes a year, Laura Sanders is the number one REMAX agent in the state of Florida for 2021. Join us each week as we discuss how to make money through buying and flipping homes to renting versus selling and everything in between. To, to join the conversation, call in live. 888-994-4995, Studio A. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, and I am your host, Laura Sanders. Every week, we talk about something that might help you make some money or save some money or help you just navigate the crazy world that we live in. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking to an amazing lawyer. His name is Nicholas Fiorello, and he is a real estate attorney, and he's going to talk today with us about what do you do when it comes to pulling permits in your home, and how does that affect the sale of your home? And then we're going to talk about deposits and how deposits work when you're trying to close on a house and the buyer doesn't perform. So welcome, Nick. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here today. So we're talking about two different topics. So let's start with the first topic, which is permits. People typically don't know what requires a permit when you know working on their home. So for instance, some people don't know in the city of Tamarack, you need a permit to change out your dishwasher. People don't be putting toilets on the side of the road. Yes. You need a permit to put in a toilet. Pods. You know, if you put a pod in your driveway, what? something so so simple may require a permit. You know, you unassumingly get a pod. Interesting. I didn't know things. that. Why wouldn't they tell you that? Is it in the paperwork that you sign? I'm not sure. I mean, you we know? depend on the people that we do business with to tell us what does and what doesn't require. Using a trusted contractor, provider, anything like that would be super helpful. Because if you're using somebody, you just find off off the street and... See, but I disagree with you. Let me tell you why. So a gentleman in one of my networking groups, this was about three years ago, came to me and said to me, I, have, I put a new kitchen in and it was a house in Parkland. So it wasn't like a cheap kitchen, right? I just finished putting a kitchen in my house and the contractor said to me that he won't return my calls to finish the punch out list and I still owe him some money and he says he's going to file against me. And I said, can I ask you a question? And he's like, yeah, I go, did you pull a permit for your kitchen? And he's like, no. And he goes, but on the estimate, it said that if it required a permit, that, that it would be a charge for it. I go, okay, so it requires a permit. He goes, well, how do you know that? I go, cause you put in a kitchen, you touched plumbing. You, you had to disconnect the plumbing to put the counters in. You had to put things back that, you know, you're, you're moving stuff. Like, it doesn't matter you put in the cabinets exactly where they are. If you're refacing, that's different. But Correct. once you start to move plumbing or change it, take it out, put it back, that's a permit required. So I said, so did he pull a permit? And he said, no. And I said, it says if it's required. It is required. It's not if it's required. It is required. 100%. If you were refacing and that was what his estimate was, then it makes sense if it's required. You're refacing cabinets, it's not required. So I said to him, so he said the guy was threatening to sue him. And I said, well, I want you to go back to him and tell him, listen, it's real simple. You didn't pull a permit and you were supposed to pull a permit. And if you want to report me for whatever it is, you're the licensed individual. I'm the consumer. I don't know what needs a permit. You gave me a contract that says if it requires a permit. You're the licensed individual. You know better. 100%. So you need to, if that makes sense, like you needed to be the one that did the right thing, not me. Of course. So by the way, that worked. He got his work done. <laughs> and they were able to settle up, but it took him saying, hey, you didn't pull a permit for this work. So you want to report me? You want to do whatever? That's okay. You're the licensed individual. You're going to be the one that's going to get in trouble of course. because you know better. And there's a contract usually that says that. So, right. Um, and never do work without a contract. No. Ever I'll, do work without a contract. Always, something in writing. Yeah. Always have something in writing because it'll lay out what is expected from both parties. I mm -hmm. mean, that's first and foremost, then it lays out, you know, step by step what will take place. 
and like I said, it sets expectations um, for everybody. But as a homeowner, it's also your responsibility, like in this case, where you told them, you know, or when they told, they told the contractor to what's going on with the permits, it's the homeowner's responsibility to search. They can call the city. They can call them before the work even started, before they even call, you know, a contractor to see mm -hmm. if a permit's required. Number one, I mean, that's so simple. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you what, what, what's needed. Two, you can follow all the permit process with the free search that every city or most most they're all city free have. yes they're and some free. make them a little difficult but some are easier but if you can't do it online call them they'll right. give you a report they'll give you the inspector or whoever the person is in charge of that permit they will give you that person's number and they'll give you an update so you as the homeowner can do that and you can be upfront with the contractor and say i'm going to i know that permits are needed because you already called Two, I'm following the status updates for the permit, so I know if you're doing your job and actually pulling them, actually doing what's needed to close them, mm -hmm. and then eventually closing them, and then I'm not going to pay you until you close it per the contract. Well, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Paying them until they close it. So uh, this happens all too often, and you know, not to throw my mother-in-law under the bus, right? She was a realtor. And I'm always asking questions, like, I'm so nosy. And she's always like, that's inappropriate etiquette. Like, but so they got a pool. And I said to them, did the permit get closed out? She just looks at me. I go, I'm just asking. Like, I'm just wondering, did the permit get closed out? And they just looked at me. And I was like, well, they look at me and they're like, well, how would we know that? I go, well, I don't pay anybody their final dollar until I call myself or go online and look. So sure enough, crazy story permit was not closed it actually failed having to do with something with the distance of the fence to the pool with wires like it was a whole to do and they had already paid them i don't remember exactly i know it was a nightmare they eventually got it all worked out six months later after they finally closed everything out the pool company went out of business talking about that i sell a lot of stuff in a specific area in coral springs that was built in the late 90s, anywhere from 97 to like 2001. And I've had three homes that were built by Mirage Pools, which is no longer in existence, that were with, built with the builder that never were closed out. Well, guess what? 1997, like codes, building codes have changed. Like now you're having to bring it to today's standards in order, because you have to go back reopen up the permit like this is a nightmare extremely i mean a lot of the times this comes up when people are selling their homes mm -hmm. and then it delays the closing you might lose the buyer you might not be able to close in any way you might have to close with fifty thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars in escrow and then rely on the fact that you have to do it and that's so another thing these i mean that all depends on the buyer that's that why point, when you're signing a contract, that's why it's so important to have a realtor and, and not just even to have a realtor, but have an attorney. Cause sometimes people are like, well, I don't really need an attorney. And I, and like, listen, I don't discount your worth at all. Well, like I use you for other things. Like I use you in the process. Like I feel like there's things where it gets to a point that once you go under contract, you definitely should have an attorney once you're getting ready to go to close. Like for me, if I'm reviewing the contract for them to sign, I don't feel like they need to send it to you to sign for me. Of that course. doesn't mean for everybody because you don't know everybody's experience. So You're very experienced. So right. You don't have to do that. Right. So it and just... so when it says like, oh, the, the buyer's agent sends over a contract and it says that they will close out any open or expired permits. I have no problem with that. Like nobody should ever have to buy a house with open or expired permits. I agree with that. So that pool issue might be an issue, but I wouldn't buy the house either. Exactly. Okay. So I wouldn't expect somebody else to do something that I wouldn't do. But when it says... Also, any unpermitted items, right? What if they change the toilet? Like, I'm, I'm, now I'm subjecting my seller to have to go back and pull a permit for a toilet that's already in? Well, I usually suggest adding language when, when we have a seller or when it's more seller friendly, that it gives the seller the option to close it out first. So then it gives the seller the option to close it out. If the seller wants to, then they'll do it, the buyer can take the property. If the seller does not want to, seller can say, hey, screw it, I don't want to do this. Contract doesn't require them to. 
just right. requires them to provide disclosures if they know about it. If they didn't know it wasn't unpermitted, then that's on them. But then they have to, the contract only says that they have to help and assist and cooperate. Right, with getting, if it's not that extra yeah. verbiage. Because the so, verbiage I'm talking about is added I know. later on terms. by other attorneys. Uh, 100%. And what I'll do to protect the seller is I'll make it the seller's option first. And then if the seller doesn't want to. The, the seller's agent's not writing the contract. Of it's the buyer's agent that's writing it. And by that time, if it even got to you and we go back and send that wording and now they're focused on it. 100%. And then they're like, ah, I don't want to do that. Well, a lot of the time you're going to have, that, it's a hang up on a lot of contracts, but the seller needs to be protected. So that's why I kind of push that language um, just because it protects the seller. It gives the seller the option. But so. how many realtors push back onto you and they pretend like now, they're almost like acting in a sense of being an attorney for their buyer. A lot of, a lot the times of them. They do. It's they, like they it's come crazy. Back and they argue all the time, and I said, "Look, they have no respect. This language is neutral. Yes. The contract by itself doesn't have any language that says the seller has to clean it, clear anything, or make it make it so the permits are closed, the violations are closed. It says they have to cooperate. So, let's put this is neutral language. That I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it gives both parties the option. Sellers have the option initially." And most of the time they're going to do the right thing. And most of the time they do do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But we're going to know about these in the first two weeks of being under contract. You're not wasting that much time. You get the lien search back in usually 10 days, uh, you know, 10 normal days, not business days. So you're getting it back relatively quickly. You know right away. Usually it's almost in the time the inspection period is, is going. So Which technically, that's why the contract is always written that during that time, the buyer should be doing it during their due diligence 100%. in that 10 days. And then if anything comes back after that time, you're kind of stuck with it. 100%. The, the, con the contract's a lot more buyer friendly, I would say. But when it comes to permits, it's naturally seller friendly. But everybody, when, a, when they submit an offer, an experienced realtor is going to put some kind of verbiage in there saying the seller has to close out any permits. When I have the buyer, I, have, I put language in like that. I don't put the neutral language. I put language <laughs> saying that the seller has to clear it. Yeah. But when I have a, a seller, I'm going to protect them because it could be something that, like the pool, something from 95 that is 30, 40 years old. And it's very hard old. to close out. Exactly. Because then they're going to have to do work all over. They're going to have to redo the pool, basically. Sometimes. But... Yeah, because of all the changes yeah, with the whole course. sucking yeah. the kids in, but <laughs> which is crazy. But some cities, some cities, you cannot pull a permit and then sell within a year. I haven't heard of that, but that's at crazy. City of Coral yeah. Springs. Is it? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's. Now I've gotten yeah. them to make an exception. That's an owner permit. Yeah. Okay. Not gotcha. like a contractor, but the thing is, is that you could potentially close out. And there's stuff you could get done to close it out yourself, which would be a lot less expensive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm telling you, like I had contractor quotes to close out the pool permit at 15,000. And this was like five years ago. And then the owner was able to do it. It was going to cost like 2,500, you yeah. know, whatever the work was that needed to happen down to even like adding alarms on the doors and which that's easy. You get that Amazon. It's cheap, yeah. but all these kind of things. When we come back, we'll kind of go over this a little bit more and then we'll move on to our next topic, but stay tuned. We're gonna to go to commercial break for some of our awesome sponsors and we'll be right back. At JK Closing Attorneys, we do all of the same things that a title company does, but with the benefits of being a law office. We can help with residential real estate, short sales, commercial real estate, refinances, 1031 exchanges, and FRIPTA withholding. Contact JK Closing Attorneys today at 954-332-3111. Again, that is 954-332-3111. Whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you have a lot riding on your loan specialist. Max Fish, a top 1% mortgage loan officer in the nation, will give you a same-day qualifying quote. Max Fish is committed to providing his customers with mortgage services that exceed their expectations, ensuring that you make the right choice for you and your family is his ultimate goal. Contact Max Fish today at 954-729-6933 or max.fisch at nwmcorp.net. 
You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelaurasell.com. And now back to the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Making Money with Laura Sanders, and I am your host, Laura Sanders. Today, I'm sitting here with Nick Fiorello. He is a real estate attorney with JK Closings, and uh, we do some business together, and we're talking about some of the crazy things that we have happened. Like, one of them is, is trying to sell a home where the homeowner hasn't pulled permits. So, I guess the biggest question is, is what is the liability here? Because... I was reading next door, this was a couple years ago, and I had a lady that, there was a lady on there that posted and said, I just bought my house and I just got fined for all these unpermitted items in the house. So that's a little scary to me that that can happen based on the pictures that were online. The city came in and, you know, obviously they can go back and sue the previous owner. I think that's the Johnson B. Davis case which is actually at the bottom of our seller's <laughs> disclosure, funny enough. It is. I mean, it's a disclosure thing. So if... Most people say no. Most people say no. They might not know. Before we talked about being involved with the contractor. Sometimes they rely on what the contractor's telling them. The contractor's like, yeah, 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 we did everything we needed to do. Paid them off, done. A couple years later, you, somebody else buys the property, they go to sell. Realtor posts on the MLS. Remodeled home, beautiful new kitchen, beautiful new cabinets, whatever. They're not permanent. Then the the city will come back. See the pictures online from the, the listing. See the pictures online. They have people on the, on the MLS. I don't know what they, you know, if they're in the MLS or not. They see the listings. Red that, Fin, maybe Zillow. they go to Zillow. Right? They yeah. could go to Zillow. They could go to Redfin. They can go to, right. I don't know. But they see them. They see the pictures. They see the nice description, big bold that the mm -hmm. realtor is putting the, to try to make it a little bit more attractive compared to other properties, which it works. It brings somebody in if there's a new kitchen, but then the city sees, hey, you redid this. There's no permits. 10 years ago, we, or three years ago, we saw it was listed and there's these pictures. It looks completely different. Then they come in and then they, they might put the like, violations where yeah. there's fees. Yeah. And they could have been backdated where they're racking up. So, you know, liability wise it's hard because the seller it's a disclosure issue for a seller yeah even like roof repairs like i think it's over like twenty seven hundred dollars needs a permit yeah so, you like know, so it, you know it's flooring over five thousand dollars technically yeah. needs a permit pretty much anything you're going to do on your house no you can put not, floors in you can but like what's going to be under but when you say five thousand like what if it's like you do this room today and you do this room tomorrow like i get it like you're pulling like we're basically it's you know, splitting hairs. I get it. Is it is splitting hairs, and there but can be an argument for both both sides. Of what's that. the liability on the agents? Agents doing what they're told from a seller. So for an agent, it's really what the seller tells you. The seller could tell you, "Hey, you know, I bought this property." But let's say the agent ago. looks at the old listing and says, "Oh, the old listing shows this. What's is there any liability there?" Like they say, "Hey, like." Or they don't look, or they look later, or like, I you guess... Know, you never know when those pictures are from, even when it's listed. Those pictures could have been before a remodel from the old seller. Yeah. They could have li a listing up for a year and a half, and they redid it in there and never updated the pictures. And then the listing's still there with the old pictures, they never updated it. So it's really a disclosure issue for a seller. It's up to the seller. If the seller knows, then they need to disclose it. Right. They need to disclose it to the realtor. They need to disclose it to the buyer. If they know about it and you can prove they know they knew about it but didn't disclose it, that's where you have the liability on the seller. The realtor knows about it because the seller told them and the realtor didn't do the, their job of disclosing it as well. When you know about it as a realtor, you need to talk to the seller about disclosing it, even if it's, you know, you, you want to protect their interest. Right. But you now have information that needs to be disclosed. But you also so, have to know what requires a permit. Exactly. That's a call I'm not a city. contractor. Of course. So call into the city. But you know, that's if you if you know in your head that they But I can add you, it to the list of things I do. <laughs> of course. And but if they tell you they redid the whole kitchen, then you know that that's gonna be a substantial amount of money. But it could have been so, refaced. Could have been. Could have been. You never know. Disclosure. They have some crazy things these days. You know you can paint granite. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
That's crazy. I saw it the other day. I was like, that was cool. So, wow. all right. So moving on to our next topic of business is <laughs> going to contract and we're not going to have a lot of time, but quickly going to, yeah, going to contract and deposits. Like nobody wants to give any money. As a buyer, you want to give a little deposit. As a seller, you want to get a big deposit from the buyer. But it's hard to get it. They don't it want is. to give it. So what do you do? Like, okay, I get it. In when we were in a seller's market, it was like you tell them what you want, and that's what you're gonna get. But in a buyer's market, things are taking you know 30, 60, 90 days to sell. Just a different approach. You have to take your offers. Usually, you're gonna have more than one. No, not lately. Right now, it's a see. You're difficult. just you're you're on the side of getting them when they're I already know. under contract. I you're know. not seeing what, like uh, yeah. I used to have, to, which was a pain in the ass. Like it would be like after the weekend on Mondays, right during that whole craze, it would be spreadsheet central. <laughs> like you know, here is you know what we got going on. Like this is your twenty offers. The, the likelihood that happens is not very likely. My argument is that always ask for more. Ask for the ridiculous oh, to be acceptable. Yeah. You know, so if they come at you with an offer for five thousand with a five thousand dollar deposit, ask for fifteen. Because at the end of the day, if the buyer defaults, the deposit doesn't automatically transfer. No, it doesn't. It's a whole process. First there's negotiations. Say you go out of contract, then there's negotiations between the sides. What if that doesn't come to an agreement? Because you can come to an agreement on a partial or, or a full transfer. But that has to be an Usually agreement. the buyers don't want to negotiate at all. No. So it sits there in limbo, right? So how long does it sit there for? It can sit there indefinitely. If it, I think if I have money there, there from like 20 years ago. I'm not joking. <laughs> I can go back and look. If like, nobody acts on it, then it can sit there indefinitely. If the seller... So the, it never can like... After like 10 years, like it never goes back to the well, buyer? Depends on, it depends on what the parties did, what the escrow agent does. The escrow yeah, agent but, can send it to interpleader, but initially... Yeah, but you don't gonna, want something sitting in your account for 10 years. No, we don't. So what we, do you do? We would send it to interpleader, which is asking the court to basically, here, here's, take the money. The court holds the money. We basically sue the other the other two parties, and then after... Oh, the you court, sue the, the other to get it out of your account, technically, that, whatever you want to call it. That's how it works. We sue the and name the other two parties, and then we step out of the lawsuit, and they fight over it. But then we But can don't get, they get notifications? They, w they would, yeah. They would get, you know, hmm. served proper notice and everything. It would be an interpleader action. And, and what does that cost? A couple thousand. So because you have to pay the court fees, you have to pay our office as an escrow agent's attorney fees because yeah so when you're if you're looking at a ten thousand dollar deposit if it's sent to interpleader that means you tried to negotiate you went to mediation you couldn't come to a solution we asked the court to here take it and then we're entitled to it you're looking at a couple thousand dollars of that which comes out of that deposit so and then if there's a, only three thousand there it's like that's what you're retaining so so wouldn't it make sense that, like why would buyers when clearly, like, if they were in the right, the title agent, I guess part of the problem is some title agents are not run by attorneys, right? So if they're not run by an attorney, how does that work? Like, they come back, wouldn't they, like, say, like, listen, they can't even say, like, oh, this is, like, this contract really was not followed and really no, it should. Give the legal right, so, on it. so now the buyer's not represented, right? Right? Well, I mean, it's the escrow agent. They're supposed to be the neutral party in a transaction. Yeah, but they don't want it in their account. They so don't. like, how does anybody advise the buyer? They have to just say, hey, we're sending, if you can't come to a solution through contract required avenues, one being trying to discuss it right after, you know, you, if you know before the end of the contract, you can discuss it or after try to come to an agreement, release and cancellation, put it in there. All right. Then you're done. We're going to do this again. <laughs> you coming back next week? If you want me to. I think you need to come back. I think we need to do this from the beginning because okay. I think we have a whole show here. We have no time left and we need to let people know how to contact us. So if you're looking for a top real estate attorney with JK Closings, give Nick Fiorello a call at 954-779-5000 and you can email us at legal at jkclosings.com. And if you're looking for a wonderful realtor, Give Laura Sanders a call at 954-650-0827. I am 
the number one REMAX a realtor. Oh, my God. Uh, I can be your attorney for a realtor. I, I went to enough school. Uh, <laughs> realtor in the state of Florida, and I would love to help you make the most money possible on your home. So call us about our 0% funding for getting your home ready to go to market. So, again, Laura Sanders, REMAX Direct. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. We're going to bring our buddy back so we can talk about what kind of deposits you should be getting and how to get that money. Till Thank you week. for tuning in for Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. To join the conversation, call us at the studio, 888-994-4995-STUDIO-8, or contact Laura directly at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. We look